Hello, my name is Enhikiyami. It's a pleasure to see you again, manager. A certain clown is the reason that this video has been released, so it would be rude of me to simply discard his existence. Before the video starts, however, I would like to say spoiler alert before our host does so. Furthermore, I would like to thank anyone who watched this video. I apologize for my inability to speak mortal languages, but thankfully I have been directed to several different people who do so. So I'll be linking different YouTubers down below who speak the languages that I do not know how to. Anyone who made artwork in this project will also be linked down below. Now without further ado, please enjoy the video. Throughout your time in the corporation, there comes a point where you must face terrifying ordeals. One must face the fear to build the future after all. But what if these ordeals stem from the very people you trusted at this place? Each of the Sephira have a dark story to tell. Only through suppressing their cause can you bring peace to their suffering. Think you can handle it, manager? My name is Grim, and I'll be your cause suppression guide. A fair warning, however, this section will contain story spoilers. Skip to the next section if you wish to avoid said spoilers. Without further ado, let's begin. Since I'll be covering these in order, let's start with the Yasaya level, with Malkith, Yasad, Hard, and Netzak. These core suppressions can only be unlocked after you've beaten Day 21 and fully expanded the department of said Sephira. We'll first start off with the control team, since it's usually the first core suppression you'll unlock. Upon Malkuth remembering how she died horrifically, she snaps at the manager and handles her suffering in the most professional and non-violent way, by transforming into a tentacle monster and wrecking havoc in your facility. You know, as you do. The gimmick that follows is designed to take control away from the manager, which is kind of ironic considering this is the control team. During the day, a green smoke or water-like filter surrounds the borders of the screen. It covers the screen completely for a moment after the day starts and at Quipoth Meltdown Level 2 and Quipoth Meltdown Level 4. During the day, you will experience the following handicaps. At Quipoth Meltdown Level 1, work type buttons no longer necessarily order the corresponding work type. The actual work types are scrambled and are relinked to a random button. For example, an employee may perform attachment work when you order them to perform insight work on an abnormality. The work types will randomize once every new Quipoth Meltdown level. Thankfully, this is the only gimmick that occurs during this core suppression. The day will be automatically completed once you reach Quipoth level 4. After completing the day, Malkuth will reward the player with permanent upgrades, such as higher LOB payout for each completed workday, all employees having a higher movement speed, as well as that department no longer being affected by Quipoth meltdowns. Next up is the information team. Following Malkuth's footsteps, Yasad reacted very professionally to his past and decided to vent to the manager in one of the more well-known core expressions, mainly due to its gimmick. During this day, a static filter surrounds the borders of the screen. It covers the screen completely for a moment after the day starts and at Quipoth Meltdown Level 2 and Quipoth Meltdown Level 4. The following handicaps will be experienced. At Quipoth Meltdown Level 1, Yasod will show how he really does not know what a JPEG is, as the hood of the game begins to go blurry and more pixelated. This includes the energy quota bar, the Quipoth Meltdown counter, employee stats, work and suppression tasks, bullet tab, work log, game speed, abnormality codex, pause screen, as well as the management report. During this day, the names of the agents are invisible and breaching abnormalities and ordeals do not possess HP bars. At Quipoth Mountain Level 2, the facility is blurred and pixelated as well. This effect will change the background, containment units, entities, and particle effects. And finally, at Quipoth Mountain Level 4, the screen colour becomes saturated and a bit more scrambled. These effects will continue until Quipoth Meltdown Level 6, where the day will end. After finishing the day, Yasad will reward the manager with these permanent upgrades. The amount of PE boxes gained from abnormalities will be increased by 25%, and the information team will no longer be affected by Quipoth meltdowns. Next up is the training team. Welcome to Hot Suppression. Here, let me read the rules. Ah, there's only one rule. We do not talk about Hot Suppression. Due to the difficulty in its gimmick, this meltdown is very infamous. But enough of my ranting, here's the gimmicks. During the day, a filter similar to an old transmission will cover the screen. You also get some very funky background music, which I kinda like. At Quipoth Meltdown Level 1, all stats from the agents in the facility are reduced by minus 15. Yes, all stats. This also reduces the level of the agent stats. Thankfully, however, the minimum stats can't get lower than 10. I suppose the reason for this is every employee getting high off of the amount of Enkephalin HODs pumping into the facility. The stats of the employees will rapidly decrease with each Quipoth Meltdown level, with Quipoth Level 2 lowering your stats by minus 25, and Level 4 lowering your stats by minus 35. The day will finally end once Quipoth Meltdown Level 6 has been reached. After completing the day, HUD will reward the player with the following permanent upgrades. All newly contracted employees will have their stats at Level 3, and the training department will no longer experience Quipoth Meltdowns. It's finally time to finish off the Assayer level with the safety team department. 
A very important note to mention here is that this cold suppression can only be unlocked after you've suppressed hard. However, you'll be happy to know that it's smooth sailing at this point. Once Ned Zack remembers his trauma, as well as his feelings of false hope towards saving the one he cherished, he breaks down and makes the manager feel the same false hope as he did through his core suppression. During the day, a green smoke or gas-like filter covers the screen. This effect, however, stays the same, and doesn't change throughout the day. Its handicaps for the facility are the following. At Kripoth Meltdown Level 1, the HP and SP recovery systems from the main rooms are slower and employees cannot be healed from any sources except from the start of each Kripoth Meltdown and from Army in Black. That is quite literally all it does. Well, except for changing the background music for Quipoth Meltdown Level 2 and Quipoth Meltdown Level 4. After each Quipoth Meltdown, all employees in the facility are fully healed of their HP and SP. However, the negative effect still remains. As per usual, the day will end when the facility reaches Quipoth Meltdown Level 6. After completing the day, Netzak will reward the player with the following upgrades. The regenerator will heal employees HP and SP anywhere in the department. However, employees in the hallways will always be healed with 50% efficiency. And finally, the safety team will no longer be affected by Quipoth Meltdowns. Alright, that's it for the upper layer, now let's move down to the second layer, Briya. In order to unlock these core suppressions, you must be past day 36. Also, all of the previous core suppressions must be completed. Without further ado, let's begin. By the time you've beaten Ned Zack's core suppression, the Central Command Team's core suppression might already be unlocked. This core suppression explains the terrible tragedy between Tifreth A and Tifreth B. Thus, the form it takes is pretty symbolic. During the day, an old filter with small black marks or spots along with the addition of dark corners will cover the screen. A bright glow occurs during certain Quipoth Meltdown levels. The following handicaps will be administered. At Quipoth Meltdown Level 1, Tifreth will remove all other departments' immunity to Quipoth Meltdowns. This gimmick sounds simple in hindsight, but don't make the mistake of underestimating the small Sundere, especially if said Sundere is having a mental breakdown. To finish this day, the player must reach Quipoth Meltdown Level 10. This means that you'll have to face a midnight ordeal, but that shouldn't be a problem for you, right? After smacking some sense into the Sundere, she'll reward you with the following upgrades. The base number of managerial bullets is increased by 30%, and the Pale Shield bullet is unlocked. Quipoth Meltdown immunity will be restored to all departments, as well as the Central Command Team. Next up is Gabura of the Disciplinary Team. And oh boy, where do I even begin with this one? Unlike previous fights, Gabura becomes a suppressible entity. Meaning yes, you will be throwing hands with her. She will spawn in the disciplinary team's main department room, and will leave after a short time. However, she wants a fair fight, so you'll be given no handicaps for this day. Representing her long and laborious life, Gabura's name will be changed to the legendary Red Mist. And I gotta say, she deserves that title. The Red Mist will act like an abnormality, specifically one classified as an LF. She possesses 3000 HP, a relatively high HP ball for this point in the game. However, she must be suppressed four times. Yes, you heard me correctly. She has four phases. Each time her health is depleted to zero, her attacks and defenses will change. Red text will appear next to her whenever she attacks. This can help you get a feel for her moveset. And boy does she have a moveset. This is going to sound like a raid guy, doesn't it? Well, here goes nothing I suppose. The first phase of the fight will have her utilize her own ego weapons against you, specifically Penitence and Red Eyes, which belong to One Sin and Hundreds of Good Deeds and Spiderbud. She will attack with either weapons to deal 25 to 30 red or white damage respectively. This depends on the weapon she swings. She can also swing with both weapons at once, dealing both red and white damage. When one third of her HP is lost, the Red Mist will use Gold Rush, which is the King of Greed's ego weapon, creating portals in random places in the facility and running through them. Any unlucky sap caught in her way will suffer 100 red damage. The final portal she runs through will always end up in another main department room. When she enters the room, she will shoot with Gold Rush, dealing 290 to 310 red damage to anyone caught in the blast. The Red Mist will take a moment to catch her breath before performing the same attack again. Once she has been suppressed once, the second phase can begin. Now is when she throws out the baby toys and brings out the big guns, specifically Da Capo and Mimicry. These ego weapons belong to the Silent Orchestra and nothing there. Her behaviour stays relatively the same, but her attacks will change drastically. She can perform a fast 3 hit combo with Da Capo, which deals a large amount of white damage. As well as this, she can do a heavy attack with Mimicry, dealing 70 to 90 red damage. Occasionally, the Red Mist will stop in place and throw a larger version of Heaven. This spear-like weapon belongs to the abnormality, the Burrowing Heaven. The spear will function similar to Defray Shoots' bullet, as it pierces through the facility. Anyone unlucky enough to be stacked with the spear will suffer 100 black damage. When one third of her HP is lost, the Red Mist will throw Da Capo to another main department room. Anyone who gets cut by the scythe will suffer 145 white damage. Once the scythe has landed, the Red Mist will pull back Mimicry and suddenly leap to the same room. 
Anyone caught in her way will suffer 100 red damage. Once she comes to a halt, she will attack twice with a larger version of Mimicry, dealing 450 to 500 damage to anyone in the room with her. This dance of death will continue until her HP is reduced to zero. In a fit of anger, she throws Decapo behind herself and Mimicry in front of herself. Any employees or clerks caught in their way will suffer 300 red or white damage depending on which weapon hit them. She then equips Smile and Justicia. These weapons belong to the Mountainous Smiling Bodies and Bird of Judgment. In this phase, the Goldrush attack makes its return, as well as the Heaven attack. In this phase, she'll mainly focus around using Pale and Black damage. She can attack by swinging Justicia, creating a small wave that travels forward at a moderate distance. Any employee caught in her way will suffer 50 to 70 Pale damage. The Red Miss will also attack twice with Smile. The first swing will slow everyone in the room, however, employees can still attack. The second hit will deal 90 to 110 Black damage. After these two swings, an AoE effect will occur. Anyone caught this AoE will suffer 8 to 10 black damage. After you've taken it down for the third time, get ready for phase 4. First, the red mist will swing Smile on the ground twice, destroying it. Note that this phase transition can still damage you. It'll do 10 to 15 black damage to every employee in the area. Once this is done, she'll unfurl Justicia and reveal its true form. Twilight. This ego weapon belongs to Apocalypse Bird, one of the two boss abnormalities in the game. Now, I advise you to turn up that Doom music because this is about to get hectic. In the final phase, the Red Mist's behaviour changes drastically, mainly due to the fact that she can now run anywhere in the facility. At different intervals, a random agent is marked. However, this mark is easily noticeable. This is because it's the same mark used for Little Red Riding Hooded Mercenary's contract. After a brief wind-up, the Red Mist will begin charging towards the marked employee. She'll be moving at almost quadruple her normal walk speed. The marked employee will no longer be able to enter any containment room. During her charge, any entity in the Red Mist's way will be attacked with a random damage type. This damage can vary between 90 and 110. She will attack the marked employee upon reaching them. If the Red Mist doesn't reach the marked target within 20 seconds, she will become tired and unable to move for the same amount of time. During her cooldown, all of her resistances will change to weak. This pattern will repeat until she's suppressed for the fourth time, ending the day. Upon beating the day, Gaburo will reward the player with these following upgrades. The maximum number of Ego Gear that can be acquired from each abnormality is increased by 1, up to a maximum of 5. However, the Ego Equipment that is granted after defeating Apocalypse Bird, the Firebird, or White Knight is an exception from the upgrade. As well as this, the relevant department will no longer be affected by Equip Off Meltdowns. Phew, <sighs> that was a lot of information to cover. Let's chill out a bit. And what better place to chill out than the welfare team with some coffee and Chessard? Well wait, he's having a meltdown too? Oh boy. Next up is Chessard's Core Suppression. During this day, a rain effect is displayed which covers the whole screen. This effect will remain until the day ends. Well, this effect is kind of fitting considering what he had to go through in his past life. At Quip Off Meltdown Level 1, one type of damage becomes illuminated at the cross at the top of the screen. While it's illuminated, the corresponding damage type dealt to employees will be multiplied by 5. After each Quip Off Meltdown, the boosted damage type is changed. This effect doesn't seem too bad, but it can be evil if you're unlucky. And trust me, it gets worse. At Quipoth Meltdown Level 2, two types of damage are boosted. And at Quipoth Meltdown Level 6, three types of damage are boosted. This is still indicated by the cross at the top of the screen. To finish this event, the player must collect all energy and reach Quipoth Meltdown Level 8. Upon finishing the day, the Caffeine Addict will reward the player with these permanent upgrades. Once each day, an employee is given a 25% chance to recover before they either enter a panic state or die. Think of it like a 1-up. For gambling addicts. Alright, now that that's done, let's move on to the final layer, Asia. This layer contains some of the hardest challenges in the game. I hope you're prepared, manager. We'll first start off with Bina of the extraction team. <sighs> or as I am contractually obligated to call her. Goth Dommy Mommy. Who even writes this stuff? Well, if you enjoy being stepped on that much, this is the core suppression for you. Mainly because, just like Gabura, you'll be throwing hands with her directly. An Aleph-class entity will appear in the Extraction Team main room, under the name An Arbiter. She possesses a high HP pool of 4000 HP and must be suppressed three times. Her behaviour will change drastically throughout each phase. However, unlike the Virgin Gabura, the Chad Beena does not take any damage from abnormalities, meaning there's little to no way to cheese this fight. Coward managers beware. Throughout Phase 1, the Arbiter summons special quip off meltdowns, meltdowns of dark fog, and meltdowns of gold. However, each department is given immunity to normal quip off meltdowns. The Arbiter will spawn in the extraction team and slowly move throughout the facility, trying to get to the upper layers. All employees in the same room as the Arbiter will have their attack speed and movement speed reduced by minus 15. 
Along with the Arbiter spawning and summoning meltdowns, it will also raise dark spikes below the agents of other departments, dealing 33 to 40 black damage to anyone standing on its position. The Arbiter herself only has two main attacks. Note, however, she will only use these attacks if there's an employee in the room with her. Her first attack will have her charge an orb on her hand of a random damage type, and soon after deal a wave of slashes in front of its position, reaching the end of the room. Let's just say anyone in front of her is pretty much already dead. Her next attack involves her charging a pillar in front of her direction of a random damage type. The damage type can be identified by the pillar's colour. After a brief period of wind-up, she will shoot it across the facility in a straight line. It deals 70 to 84 damage of its corresponding type. Any containment unit the pillar passes will be affected by a quip-off meltdown. Now to cover the special quip-off meltdowns she can create. The meltdowns she can summon are different from the usual quip-off meltdowns, but work similar to them. At the start of each of her phases, 6 meltdowns of dark fog and 6 meltdowns of gold will occur. First, the meltdown of dark fog. This is a quip-off meltdown covered in grey. Abnormalities with this meltdown will suffer a minus 10% success rate and have a 45 second timer. Upon completion, a grey orb will be shot towards the Arbiter. Upon clearing all the meltdowns, the Arbiter's defenses will decrease, becoming vulnerable against all types of damage. After a while, these defenses will decrease to endured. This will also remove the status effect for being in the same room as her. Next up is the Meltdown of Gold. This Quipoth Meltdown is covered in a gold-like colour. As per usual, these Meltdowns will have a 60 second timer. However, the penalty is much more devastating this time. Because if you fail to complete them, the Arbiter will heal 1 HP for every 60 seconds. So yeah, you'll want to get those done as quickly as possible. Much like the Meltdown of Dark Fog, upon completing them, an orb will be shot towards the Arbiter. Upon removing them all in time, the Arbiter will be stunned, unable to move and attack for a while. If the Arbiter is not pushed into the next phase in time, she will resummon her Quipoth Meltdowns again after 60 seconds. As usual, the spikes are also resummoned as well. Think this is bad already? This is only phase 1. Upon phase 2 beginning, the Arbiter will summon her special Quipoth Meltdowns along with a new one, the Meltdowns of Waves. Her defenses and resistances are reduced back to their original state, and her attacks will remain the same. I'll only be covering the Meltdown of Waves, since it's the only new thing in this phase. The Meltdown of Waves is a purple coloured Quipoth Meltdown. Much like the Meltdowns of Gold, there is a minus 5% success rate. There is also a 60 second timer. However, this meltdown can also do another nasty thing. The meltdowns will occasionally summon minor enemies. These enemies are invulnerable to any kind of attack and function similarly to the King of Greed or Ordeals of Amber. They will only move forward, dealing 17 to 20 black damage to any employee in its path. These enemies can only be defeated by completing the meltdowns of waves. Just keep following the same rules and strategies and phase three will begin. During this phase, the Arbiter will become immune to all types of damage and will charge pillars around itself in the north, south, east, and west. The colour of each pillar will determine what type of damage it will deal. The only way to stop this attack is to complete the final meltdown she'll summon, the Meltdown of Pillars. The Meltdown of Pillars is a cyan-coloured Quipoth Meltdown. Any containment chamber with this Meltdown will suffer a minus 20% success rate. Instead of the usual 60, you will have only 45 seconds to complete the Meltdown. Removing all of them will cause the Arbiter to stop her attack. If they are not all cleared in time, the Arbiter will shoot the pillars to the direction they're facing. They will deal massive damage of their type to any entity in their way. In addition to this, any containment chamber in the pillar's way will suffer a normal Quipoth Meltdown upon being touched. However, you'll be happy to know that the outcome of this scenario doesn't really matter, as it will always result in the Arbiter having her defenses drop to Endured. This cycle will repeat until her HP drops to zero. Upon completing the day, Bina will reward the play with the following upgrades. Ego gear will no longer be lost or destroyed when the wielder dies, and the extraction team will no longer be affected by Quipoth meltdowns. All that remains now is the core suppression of the record team. Anyone who has the audacity to make a JoJo reference here will get the execution bullet. This core suppression will most likely be the last one you ever do. And who oh boy is its mechanic annoying. You may have to sit on your hands for this one. During this event, the screen starts to enter grayscale after some Quipoth meltdowns. A static effect will cover the whole screen upon the day starting, and a Quipoth meltdown level 7, 8, 9, and 10. The following handicaps will occur. Note that all departments will suffer Quipoth meltdowns, regardless of their immunity. At Quipoth meltdown level 1, the player can no longer change the game speed or pause. The game speed is fixed at 1. Upon the player pressing spacebar like an idiot, one employee in any department will either die or enter a panic state. You'll know you messed up because the pause is followed along with a screen breaking effect, which lasts for a few seconds. The game speed will increase every time the player completes a quip off meltdown, the max being 2.5. To finish the day, the player must collect all the energy and reach quip off meltdown level 10. After completing the day, Dio, I mean Hawkma, will reward the player with the following upgrades. The maximum limit upon all employee statistics is now elevated to 130. When contracting a new employee, their stats can now be fortified to 130. 
As well as this, the record team will no longer be affected by equip health meltdowns. And that about sums it up. You've got the tips, so now it's up to you, manager. Now get out there and suppress those calls.